Coucou les filles, it's Jen. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time seeing me, I'm from LA. I'm a Latina American who has been living here in Paris for one year now. One year and I've learned a lot in this year. So I wanted to make these videos to kind of help out someone who's transitioning to Paris. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And yeah, let's just get started. So I have a lot of questions for people who want to come study here. I'm on a student visa myself, so I know the process of what it's like looking for schools and trying to fill all the requirements. Most schools here in Paris, they will require for you to have a high level of French. So that level is either B2 or C1 or even C2, which is advanced for like a master's program, for example, for political science. If you are looking into a program that is private and offers courses in English, because I've had people come ask me about that, and I know some people who are going to Schiller's University or the American University of Paris, that's an option as well if you have the budget to spend for that. I didn't want to do that because I didn't have the budget for that and for me if I wanted to come live in France it's because I wanted to learn the language and so this is what I did I just went to French language schools to get my visa that school is called Campus Long I don't want to put them on blast but I, I didn't have the best experience there so I don't really want to recommend it to people so I, I get asked where I went but what I'm going to do is I'm going to list down below in the info box uh, some schools for you to check out and to see their tuition and see if that works for you. So I was doing that for about nine months and I spent about 2450 So I was learning French at school and I was also learning and practicing French at my work. And that's how I got to a B2 C1 level after one year. So after achieving this level, and getting tested at this level. Then I applied to La Sorbonne, where I go now, and I'm an art history student. And it's my first semester, and it's really hard. <laughs> so I get a lot of questions from people asking me, well, where's the best computer science program? Where's the best business program? And to that, I am going to suggest two links. I'm going to suggest Study Rama. Study Rama is a website where you can compare programs. You can type in the search box, uh, what kind of program you're looking for, and see according to locations in France. If you want to study in Paris, you can put Ile de France, and you can find all the schools that have that program and then do a comparison. So I think that's a pretty useful link. Of course, it's in French. There's also L'Etudiant, and L'Etudiant is cool because it'll give you the statistics of um, employment after graduation. It'll show you kind of like a breakdown of the program, what it entails. So I will also link that down below for anyone who is searching for a program to come study here in France. Also, if you are looking for a business program, there is the school Paris School of Business. What's the process of applying as an individual outside of the European Union? That's a really good question. Um, I have the requirements here from La Sorbonne, so I'm just going to read them out to you. So first you have to make your candidature from the school that you want to apply to. For me, it was La Sorbonne. So you have to make an online dossier, you have to send all your information, um, you have to put your educational background, your work background, um, just facts about you, where you were born, all that stuff. And then you have to download that and add some supplementary paperwork to go along with it. And that is a letter of motivation. So I'm going to let you guys know that the letter of motivation here in France is so much more different from one in the US. In the US, I think we get a little bit more personal. Like we wanna tell our story, we wanna tell our background, we wanna tell about like events that have like changed us. Here in France, it's like, not at all the case. They want to know what your educational experience is. Like, what have you done? Like, what internships have you taken? Like, what classes have you taken that were outside of like your program? Like, they want to know what you've been doing and preparing for the program you're going to be in because they want to see if you're, you're really serious and like qualified to like enter into this program. So I had a really kind of like mental like crisis about it because like my educational experience as i said 
earlier, I dropped out of college. I dropped out because I was getting divorced and I never really focused on education and I regret this so much because then I was facing it when I was writing my letter of motivation of like, I never took any internships, I never really like focused on education. Um, obviously I still got into school but it was kind of like, a, wow, I wish I did so much more. And so when I was writing the letter of motivation, I had to talk about like my plans for what I'm going to do with my degree, where I see this program kind of taking me in, in career fields, and I focused on that. And I also talked about one of the classes, which was Latin American art that I took when I was in community college and how that really kind of brought me to where I am today, basically. If you are writing your letter of motivation to get into school here in France, it's going to be in French. So you have to make sure that someone reads it for you, someone who is a francophone reads it to make sure the syntax is all right, to correct any errors. So. So it has to be good and I thank my coworkers so much for helping me out with that. I thank Mo, my beautiful, beautiful friend from LA. He's Parisian LA based. I thank him so much for helping me out um, with a lot of things. He's, he's the best. So To go with your dossier to send to school, you have to provide a CV, a resume if you will, and it has to be in French obviously. You have to also send a copy of your passport and also your carte de séjour, your residence card here in France. And you also have to have your school notes, your grades, you have to have them translated into French so, as well as your high school diploma equivalent. Um, have that translated into French and this is what I did so you gotta pay beaucoup bucks for like Sending your dossiers because there's the exam there's translations for your high school diploma and your notes and your notes are like It's like this is by page too that you pay. I think it was like 30 or 40 euro a page So that's beaucoup bucks honey. Oh one last thing This is where I f***ed up and I got rejected from La Sorbonne the first time um, I didn't send in my TCF certification of my language and I dropped the ball on that because it wasn't mentioned in the requirements of papers to send but I should have kind of sent it anyways so I totally dropped the ball on that and then I found out this is why I was initially rejected and so I'm going to let you guys know send in your French exam results with your dossier even if it's not listed on the requirements send it anyways because they need to see that and then you're gonna mail this in to the address provided and that's about it how old is too old to try to go to school in France hmm I would say you're never too old I am 29 myself and this is my first year in a bachelor's program in France. did have a lot of trouble when I was researching schools because originally I wanted to do graphic design because I thought I would get like technical skills and it wouldn't be as much theory. I would actually go to a job and like learn skills. And so I was researching programs for art schools here in Paris and all of them, mostly all of them, like 90% of them, had a limitation in age. And that limitation is 26. So I was obviously like 28 at the time and I was so, so disappointed and so stressed about people closing the door on me because of my age. And that is so sad. Like that, ugh. I remember being so stressed out about that and like crying and just feeling like, fuck, I this up I should have come when I was way younger and I didn't and now I have zero opportunities on the other hand there are other private schools that don't have like a limitation in age and it's just you have to pay a little bit more right now I'm at a public school public university so there's no limitation and that was really comforting because I only pay like if I told you how much I paid, I paid 189 euro. 189 euro. To go to La Sorbonne for the year. The US needs to get it together. There's also a lot of benefits for students that are under the age of 26, 25. You get a lot of student discounts in the city. So if you want to go to museums, if you want to go to the movie theater, if you want to take a yoga class, there's always student discounts. 
it's just with my age, I can never get them, which sucks. LJ Posey asks, why do you have to take so many classes? Right now I'm taking nine classes at La Sorbonne and it's just because it's part of my contrat pédagogique. It's just the courses that I have to follow. It's actually 60 credits. I'm looking at it right here. Um, it's 60 credits and there are a lot of uh, categories that I have to fill requirements for and that means I have to take a lot of classes. When I first started, I was like in complete shock. Um, my coworkers would tell me, oh, you know, I would always skip school and it's not a big deal. Like students in France, like they don't really like go to their classes. You guys fucking lied to me because I'm stuck at school all the time and I have a lot of things to do and fulfill, like a lot of requirements to fulfill. It might be the program as well. The art history program might just be very demanding and theoretical, so. Carter Baby Lung asked me, do you have a favorite class? Mm, yes, I do. Arts and archaeology of Greek art. That, I'm so biased because I think my teacher's very cute. <laughs> so Nikki DCM, hey girl, asked me a couple questions as well. Uh, how long did you study French? I took a couple courses in the US. I took a, a course at l'Alliance Francaise, uh, an intensive class right before I came here to Paris. Before that, I took a class at 16, two classes, and then like two classes in college. So I had like the very basic roots when I came here. But again, it took me like a good 10 months to a year to feel confident and proficient and just like I could talk to anyone. After uh, me being here a year, I took the TCF, which I will link down below uh, where to get your testing. Some schools require a DELF exam and some require both, that you take both. I took just the TCF for La Sorbonne and it cost me around 120 euro, so it was kind of pricey. Was the test difficult? The exam itself, it's not that it wasn't difficult, it just I thought it was going to be so 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 much more but um, they just tested me on reading comprehension on listening and syntax like gr grammar but I think it was a hundred and twenty minutes and I actually ran out of time so I ran out of time at the end I kind of just ended up guessing it really wasn't as intense as I thought it was going to be I, I think I was just psyching myself out so you're gonna be fine the test is not as crazy as you think it's going to be and it does help to prepare in advance it does help to buy books that will prepare you for the exam um, online exercises so star life 96 asked me how long will you be living in Paris um that is to be determined because I'm starting out in a bachelor's and it's my first year I have to get a master's complete a master's in order to transfer to a work visa and I have one year after completing my studies to look for a job and so it is about five years until I finish my master's which is really kind of crazy and scary at the same time but then that means that I'll be here for a while you know I'll be here focusing I will see if this is a life that I can manage because being a student is really intense and being a working student on top of that is kind of like, it seems virtually impossible. <laughs> um, I'm really trying not to panic because I don't know any student who is working as much as I am or doing something that's not like, you know, serving or like teaching kids or babysitting. So I am just kind of in a really tough spot right now. So I'm trying to figure that out. I'll see if like being limited to this visa and being limited in how many hours I can work is a good thing for me. Cosmic Lotus Eater. Cosmic Lotus Eater, hey! Will you share an incident in your life which taught you a lot and had a major impact in the making of the person that you are today? Oh girl, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough one. I think um, there's two things really. Um, I've mentioned my divorce and I've mentioned the person that I was when I was married and that was a person that was completely dependent on my husband 
didn't know, didn't have a sense of independence at all, didn't really know who I was. I got married at 19 and didn't really have the time to kind of figure out who I was or explore what it is that I loved. Um, and so when that ended, and it ended because I felt very lost and I felt very depressed and I knew that I had to make a change. And so when I left and got divorced, I moved to New York and that kind of experience really pushed me to be who I am today. Um, moving to New York is not a joke, it's super hard and because I was never kind of on my own before and I was never really in charge of providing for myself before, it really, really made me such a hustler. It made me such a hard worker and it took me really out of my comfort zone. That's a tough freaking city to like move to. So yeah, I would say that that experience really kind of was the catalyst for who I am now today. Like this person, this person, like, I don't know, this person just like wants to be free all the time and like pushes herself to change. And I'm not afraid of starting over at all because I've done it so many times now. So um, I think that first initial starting over from my divorce really really helped me become more fearless and more in charge of my life because I wasn't before so yeah Waffle Ninja, hey Waffle Ninja asks you should try speaking French in your videos it would be great practice oui vous avez raison je sais c'est juste que je pense que mon français n'est pas parfait Et j'ai honte, <rire> vraiment j'ai honte, euh, parce que je suis un peu perfectionniste. C'est juste que je suis un peu timide, je suis un peu nerveuse quand je parle en français. Je, je crois que je suis pas très forte, mais euh, vous avez raison, je vais essayer. Euh, en fait, je crois que je vais créer une vidéo avec euh, mon ami français, s'il veut, s'il regarde maintenant où on essaie de, de la nourriture euh, mexicaine euh, on va voir, on va, on va essayer des trucs <rire> merci pour l'idée <rire> I think I'm going to do a part 2 to this video because I want to talk about jobs and I want to talk about it in depth I just don't want this video to be super long so if you have any more questions please leave them down in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram, it's at pupusas and um, yeah, and I'll make a new video about it. So yes, I'll be making more videos and trying to provide some information on things that you might be curious about. So this video is mostly about school, but I want to do videos about, you know, kind of getting settled into France. Let me know what your questions are. And I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe because it just, I don't know, it makes me so happy to be able to connect with people. Thank you guys so much and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Oh, I'm still recording.